Dear Harstam, Zerk's ability to YOLO in things is just way too strong. Look at my replay! Exclamation mark. I'm a low diamond player, and my macro is not the best. I'm sorry for that. But at the other hand, the Zerk's ability to rush and destroy complete bases is just way too powerful. The replay will show you. They lose a lot of their own troops, but at the same time deal a lot of damage to Eco of Terran. I was forced to go for a all-in at this point, 14 minutes and 20 seconds into the game, and lost to the Zerg's ability to remax instantly. Name Hellcat Race Terran League Diamond on the European ladder. All right, let's have a look at this then. Hellcat, he's uh, playing against a fella named Waldo. We finally found him. Been looking for him for a while. Hellcat is a uh, a Diamond Terran player, and these often show a lot of the characteristics of the, the higher level Diamond players, where they're very whiny and um, they lose a lot as well to uh, random things, just like most Terrans do. Yeah, he's just gonna go here and oh, he's lurkers! Hey, enough to do with Starcraft this unit. Look at this. He just sieges. Oh my god. I'm dead. Dang it! Kind of curious to see what Hellcat is going to be doing here. Sends out a second SCV. Okay. So this is too late for a barracks. But it's too early for a regular scout. You know? If he wants to proxy a barracks with this, that would be a little bit like uh, getting a Christmas card during Easter. Like, it's just too late, you know? But if this is for a scout, it's also kind of like getting a Christmas card for Easter, except too early. So, the same analogy working two ways there. It's, uh, it's a first time for everything. So we have uh, <laughs> Hatch first coming out of the... This also wasn't even in time to block the hatchery. Like... This was the worst SEV scout in the world. It just falls right into the middle of being completely useless. You lose a bunch of extra money because you send it out earlier. Um, and you don't get to block anything. You don't get any more info earlier on. You don't need to know whether your opponent is going pool first uh, before you want to build your reactor. That is the timing you care about. Because the response, if you scout pool first, which usually you would scout at the two minute marks when your SEV arrives a little bit earlier, 156, 157. If you scout your opponent opening with a pool first, you can just add a second marine after your first marine and you can get a low ground bunker. All of these responses are still in time. If you scout it earlier, nothing changes. The only time this would be valuable information is perhaps if your opponent is playing a proxy hatchery and then you can build your CC on the high ground. But if you know your opponent is doing a proxy hatchery because there's no hatch here, you can also just continue marine production and get a bunker. So really it doesn't matter. It's like it's just worse what I'm trying to say basically. This bad scout. Yeah, bad scout. Not a good scout at all. All right. Hellbat, uh, no sorry, Hellcat is moving across the map with his Reaper. He's also arriving late with his Reaper. I wonder why that is. Maybe he just didn't send it over in time. Did he open up with gas first? No, he didn't. There's a couple of things here that uh, are, are feeling a little bit funky. Okay, uh, timing wise. I, not a huge fan of that. And he just patrols his Reaper in front of his opponent's base. I kind of feel bad for this Reaper. The Reaper has like a 10 second window. Okay, I, I just want to follow the, the life journey of this Reaper real fast, okay? Because the Reaper is a very special unit. The Reaper has in this matchup about a 10 to 15 second window in which it is useful. Now, this window has already been reduced because for whatever reason, Hellcat decided it was a good time to keep the, the Reaper at home for a little bit longer. So look at, look at this Reaper, okay? Already arriving five seconds late. That is 50% of his useful lifespan, okay? First, he didn't even know whether he wanted to go into the main or towards the natural. Then he gets the order to patrol in front of his opponent's base. Back and forth. Look at this. Back and forth. Back and forth. Meanwhile, the queen is out. This, this is where the timing 
of where the Reaper is useful ends. At this point, this unit is completely useless. And the Reaper knows that as well. He's not an idiot. He knows that once the Queen is out, his bullets are, are nothing. He might be able to, to pick off a creep tumor and write home about his great success. But he's, he's a useless feller at this point. This Reaper is well aware of that. And as a result, he just decides to end it. He doesn't want to come home with saying he didn't even see battle once. He'll have two shots. Three, four. He hits a Ling four times and then he dies. This is the most useless Reaper I've ever seen. It didn't scout anything. It didn't do any damage. It did force out the Lings. But that is really the minimum. That just happens by building the Reaper. That's not an achievement whatsoever. That's the opposite of an achievement. That's just a thing that, that happens automatically. It's like when you when you get a kid, you automatically become father or mother, you know? That is the, the starting achievement. It's like, it's like the things you get after the tutorial in a video game, you know? It doesn't really count. Like, you, can, you can't write that on your resume that you're a father or a mother. I know there's people that try doing that. And I'm sure that Hellcat will also write on his resume um, that he built a Reaper. But it doesn't count. We're not buying it, Hellcat. No one is buying it, okay? Also, no one wants to see the Facebook pictures of your Reaper. We don't care. Banshee on the way here. Third CC. Actually, for how bad everything has been so far, his build order isn't even... It's actually quite good. This build order looks honestly quite legit. He's building Hellions, getting a Banshee as a third CC. Uh, he's not building as many SEVs perhaps as he should. And he's keeping the Hellions at home to guard this ramp. Absolutely brilliant. It's like buying a flamethrower to roast some marshmallows. It's like, I'm sure it will do the job, but... He also just could have done that with a matchstick. Or, you know, just in a campfire. Like a normal person. Idiot. Um, but he's very keen on keeping this ramp for whatever reason. Maybe he's just actually just guarding the unbuildable plates. Oh. Huh? Reen walks into the main base, starts attacking the Overlord. There's a lightning quick response he had here as well. That Overlord's been floating around in his base for the past 35 seconds. If you have this, uh, if you have this Marine on, on guarding duty, uh, I don't think your house will be robbed empty before this guy comes over. Absolutely, absolutely great. Now, another fantastic timing here on the Hellions as they arrive at 511. I feel like this is. This is really just uh, the, the tale of this game so far, is that our, our boy Hellcat seems to just be too late everywhere. They're just absolutely too late every single time. He's the type of guy that would pardon a turkey after the Thanksgiving dinner is over. It's like, it's too, it, it's too late, Hellcat. It doesn't count anymore. We ate him yesterday. It's like... Now the Banshee's fly over. Cloak already done about uh, 20 seconds ago. So I'm glad to see that he's sticking with the team at least. Gives me to gives me something to talk about because he actually... This is so... It's so weird. He's just doing everything slow, but he's doing the things quite well. Look, the barracks. He has three barracks. Gets two eBays. Like, the order of the things is correct. But it's just... It's, it's just... Everything is just a little bit slow. Like... If, if he was a pizza maker and he was making a margarita, like the, the the way of putting the things on the pizza is correct, but it would just take him three hours to assemble the damn thing. Okay, and here we go wrong. Gets a f No, actually, he gets the second factory and five barracks before the 4CC. It just looks so close because he was floating a crap ton of money. But once again, the order of things is just so frighteningly correct. It almost looks like a good game. It almost does, if you didn't know anything about timings. If time never had been invented, and if clocks weren't a thing, this would have been the perfect build order. It really would have been. Because the order, it's... It really is correct. Well, he forgets his plus, plus one armor. But everything else... I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Hellcat. Uh, another thing I'm a huge fan of, by the way, is that he believes that all of these units are one-time use. And that after you do your initial damage, it's only proper to go back home uh, with these banshees. You know, you don't, you don't, you don't want to stay too long on the other side of the map. It's definitely not something you want to do. He's a he's a man of etiquette and and proper, uh, you know, being proper in general in life. He doesn't doesn't want to annoy his opponents too much. He uses it once, the surprise effect, 
And then from there on out, he, he leaves them at home to once again guard the unbuildable place. Yeah, the most interesting sensor tower location I've seen in my life. <laughs> Look at this sensor tower location, okay? Hellcat will get the warning of the sensor tower when the freaking bailings are in his mineral line already. Ah, that is big, my friend. That is very, very big. Or if there is an overlord hiding over here and he comes into the natural to put a Nidus, he'll get a good warning of that as well, about two seconds ahead of time. The greatest sensor tower of all time. I didn't think it was possible, but we found it, ladies and gentlemen, close to the unbuildable place. Aha! This is why it's over here. This is the most optimal location where it doesn't block any food traffic, but it still provides a lot of vision to truly protect these unbuildable plates. I'm not quite sure what uh, our friend Hellcat actually has for, uh, you know, static objects, but he seems to really, really like the unbuildable plates. Viking on the way now as well, out of a react. This is, this is kind of new to me, the, the Viking medevac combination. He's very keen on killing this Overseer. I guess because it's showing on his mini, it's like this stupid red dot on the mini map. Should have never built that sensor tower. Um, yeah, th this is, once again, we're just a little bit late with everything. This opponent is casually building 10 overlords. He's preparing for... Uh, Preparing for a freaking tsunami over here. The amount of food that he's getting. Viking will take out the Overseer. Yeah, so usually after this build, I recall, you hit a 6.30 timing with two Medifex and 16 Marines. Um, Hellcat right now is aiming for about the 9 minute mark. Well, actually, his second Medifex isn't quite out yet. He does, however, have 8 more Marines than most people had 2.5 minutes ago. So technically that's an improvement, but because we are capable of knowing time and looking at clocks, uh, I am actually not that impressed by this performance. Not yet. Okay, here comes a drop. And he's going to hit a solid three minutes after it really is supposed to hit, which once again, he's doing the correct order of things, but the timing is just, well, extremely late. I'm not even quite sure how it's possible if you do the correct order and then just still be late. It must just be very slow. This APM also isn't that low. It's 107. But you should be capable of clicking the things at a, at a certain correct speed then. It's not like this APM has been tied up in controlling units either because the Hellions, well, they got sent home. The Banshees, they got move commanded into 35 Hydras just now. Right, here comes a bit of micro. Okay, well, kills some units and then picks up again. Does get the fly away, so it keeps eight of his marines alive. That's good. Um, during all of this, however, he has been floating a decent amount of money. Sometimes, you, you know, I actually never really consciously thought of this. So I know how much money one base mines and how, how much money it gets from like uh, 66 workers, you know? And I, I have that kind of in turn. Like, so I, I look at like three bases. I'm like, okay, that's 2,400 minerals a minute or so. But I never quite realized how much money you truly spend a minute until you see these people actually capable of floating like 5k resources at the 10 minute mark or at the 9 minute mark. Like, it just doesn't occur in my head that rather than spending the money, you just sit on it the entire time. There's just... Like, if we look at this money, we can kind of translate that to time. Like, right now, the income is too high because he hadn't muled in a while. But let's just say he gets about 3k minerals, okay? 3k minerals a minute. Or, sorry, 3k resources three on average. I think from the start of the game, that is being rather generous to him and his macro. He gets about 3k resources on average, okay? gas and minerals right now he's floating about 5k resources that means that for at least one and a half minutes he hasn't macroed one and a half minutes of income away and don't forget that you can macro one and a half minute of income in about three seconds like it's actually true especially with tearing you have a lot of production this means that there's just times where he wasn't controlling anything because these Hellions, they stayed at home for the majority. Now they walked across the map again. The Banshees weren't doing much. The Reaper didn't get microed either. He move commanded that across the map, patrolled it, then sacrificed it into the main base. 
where has his attention been going? Is the real question. Is Hellcat perhaps one of these gamers that plays two games at the same time? Or perhaps is he like uh, one of them stock traders, you know? That whenever he sees a good trade on one of his other seven screens, he has to quickly click it. It is possible because I have no clue where his attention has been tied off. Often in lower level games, when people are floating money, at least you can say, well, it makes sense because this guy was controlling his Reaper like his life depended on it. You know, they have like 1200 APM with a Reaper. But Hellcat hasn't done anything like that. Quite like that at all. He's just been sitting at home, looking at stuff. And now he's looking at his bases die. I assume at least he's looking... No, he's just looking at his tank. He starts microing once again. Scans for it. Oh, that's a lot of lurkers. Lurkers. No seismic spines. No quick burrow either. 12 minutes into the game. Like, he was extremely unprepared for everything. Because he just had so much money in the bank. Now these lurkers, they slowly but surely, they burrow forward. They're taking everything out. And then uh, this is where Hellcat is going to make a stand. And, and we know why. Look at this. Just guys, guys. <laughs> Patrolling around the unbuildable. Pl oh, he's gonna leave it. He says, "Well, the tanks are good enough. Just gonna go for a counterattack." And this is the first move in the entire game that I think is actually good. This is a good move. Going for a counterattack when, where you're under very heavy pressure and you have units that can't fight your opponent's army. Yeah, this is a darn good call. I love this. Just go for a freaking drop. It's gonna a win you a little bit of time. Oftentimes at lower level, it's gonna. Uh, force your opponent to just run their entire army back home because they have no clue how to split armies and while you're doing this you can build up a solid defense at home look at that triple tanks two more factories on the way you can get triple tank production going here wow and honestly if you survive in this game you might just be fine because you have a lot of money like it's like sure your eco got hurt a little bit you're still 62 workers though you have plenty of bases it's not even that bad you have a freaking planet Oh, talking about wasting good manpower here. These mules repairing this uh, planet are actually physically hurting me. So this third base is going to be under some heavy pressure. But there's going to be about five tanks. Sadly, there's also still 16 marines in these medifacts. <laughs> tanks to the high ground. Unload the marines. Tanks to the high ground. Unload the marines. Tanks to the high ground. Okay. It's a little bit slow, but he gets it done eventually. Also lifts the CC. Now, don't forget that we still have a lot of barracks that technically can be producing. These two tanks, they're stuck on the high ground. I don't think that is on purpose. What is this barracks doing? Oh, he wants to, uh, I think, be, be capable of moving these bad boys. If, if all of these tanks could actually escape their tech lab prison, he would probably be fine. Even now, if these tanks could just move over here, I actually believe that Hellcat might be somewhat okay. Like, if he just sets up a defensive position, it's obvious his opponent doesn't know a lot about proper engagements, you know? So far, we, like, this guy just walks into tank fire the entire time. We have the opportunity right now to to kind of set up. I mean, we just, we just held a big attack. We still have a lot of money in the bank. We have a crap ton of CCs as well. Like, we can build workers if we want to. Five at a time. Like, that will go pretty fast. That will go a long way. There's money for extra command centers. Well, oh, sorry, four at that time. I thought there was a CC here. So Paris is going to assist. This is this is the perfect time to build up. We actually survive with a bunch of siege units. Our opponent is on freaking Roach Hydra, 73 workers. Once again, if we just build some Marines here, get two medevacs, and we get these command centers. I'm not saying the game is even, but we could be at 150, 160 supply, and we'd have very valuable supply. Well, our opponent has... Has dog crap supply. Like, what even is this? This is pure Hydra. It's just gonna die to freaking eight tanks. Plus two vehicle weapons. Upgrades are good. Like, we're looking pretty solid. The correct decision here is just to go back home. You have a lot of money in the bank. Like, this is like having... It, you carry with you, like, uh, like a, a couple of bullets, you know? Like, uh, you can reload your gun maybe once. And you finish that and you're done. But behind you, there's still this massive, like... Uh, this, this depot with just endless weapons and bullets. Like, 
you have lots of ammunition still. In this case, the ammunition is the money. You could just go home and get that, but you do need to get it. Right now, you're investing a lot into things that are going to be useful in the future, these three command centers, you still have four tanks stuck in your main base behind a single tech lab. You have a lot of infrastructure, which is super useful because you have so much money and you have enough uh, command centers that you can kind of effectively mine from multiple bases. You're actually in a good spot if you would just freaking use your money. Sadly, you're not using your money and you're also not using half of your tank force currently. And because you don't really have any marines, that actually is quite sad. Now you kind of realize what's going on. It's like, hey, maybe I should go home. This all could have been done way more efficiently. You could have just already been set up with these eight tanks while producing freaking three more new tanks. Perhaps building a couple of depots, getting more mines, getting the three, three upgrades for the bio going. Maybe even getting a plating upgrade here or getting plus three on the vehicle weapons. Like your position, honestly, is quite good. Just sit at home, send a single medevac over here, a single medevac over here, and go multitask. Or just leave them there. I don't even really care. Just Whenever you get attacked, you send them in, you stim them, and you A move on the map or something like that. It's also possible, okay? If you don't want to multitask. Right now, the macro is your main priority. You want to get rid of that freaking money that you have. Your opponent is maxed out already, so he wants to trade. And he's going to start trading. Finally, your four tanks move out. Where are they going, though? Okay. So three of your tanks are on the other side shelling away at an extractor. One Liberator is guarding this... This Vespin Geyser. You had four unseached tanks over at your third base. And nothing but, like, two or three mines defending your, your fourth. Some great decision making here. It's also obvious that, to me at least... Oh my god, this can be a fight. Look at this. Imagine, honestly, imagine that there was three more tanks and just 25 marines here. I think you actually would have won the fight. I actually believe you could have held this fight. Because then the lurkers can just burrow straight into your face. They first need to go towards the marines. You can kite back with the marines. Meanwhile, the tanks are shooting. Your opponent is once again maxing on, on, on roaches. And this is the beauty of low-level games. Is that even when you're losing very hard, often your opponents just have so many falls on their own that you can always get back as long as you get to an area in the game where you are more capable or more competent than your opponent. However, I'm kind of sad to say that I don't think there's a single area in this game where you are more capable than your opponent or really more capable than than most people that i've seen play it, it it has been a little bit of a sad affair and to to kind of add the the rotten cherry on top of the nasty pie uh you're also staying in the game way too long you have 41 supply left you still have some money but this is the worst situation you've ever been in yeah gg there we go took a while but you get it in the end the GG. This was a nasty game. This was a nasty game, uh, Hellcat. Waldo really kind of kind of figured you out. And let, let's just look at this in a in a logical way, okay? So f first of all, the compliments. Okay, I, I want to give you some compliments because the order in which you did things that was great. You know, if I e ever need someone to 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 put things in order for me, whether that's you know from like a, a group of people in, in height, you know, from tall to, to smaller, or um, you know, I, I need my closets cleaned up and you just happen to be around, you can order my books, then you'd be the guy to call. For a StarCraft game, however, I, I don't think I'd even put your name in my phone because the units that you built, although they were the correct units, never got used correctly. The Reaper completely missed his timing. The Hellions missed their timing. The Banshees missed their timing. Uh, but the initial the initial damage at least was good. Then they went back home, even though they had full HP, basically. Then you send them back in at, like, the 9-minute mark. The Hellions also made a reappearance, like, 5 minutes too late, obviously. No initial creep denying. You were floating a crap ton of money. Your entire unit movement made absolutely no sense. You moved out when you shouldn't have. You stayed at home when you should have been moving out. You don't quite understand how SimCity works, as there were like five tanks stuck in your main base for, honestly, I think majority of the... Nah, not much, like maybe five or six minutes. You had four tanks there. It's a very, very vital moment. It really was quite painful to watch. Um, I, 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 I don't enjoy that. 
I, I, I really don't. And and like I said, your your macro just really sucked. Your decision making was was proper terrible as well. I just wanna kinda grab that form again. What was it really you complained about? The Zerg's ability to rush and destroy complete bases is just way too powerful. Yeah, maybe if you wouldn't have invested your entire army into defending the unbuildable plates, it would be a, re a, a little bit easier to defend the outside bases where the game really matters. Um, the replay will show you. They lose a lot of their own troops, but at the same time deal a lot of damage to the eco of Terran. Honestly, the eco wasn't really any of your issue. Like, the, your money was always fine. You died having 2k, 2k in the bank or something like that. Like, it's... The eco was completely irrelevant in the game. The problem was your spending was just way too low. And your unit control was god-awful. Um, you do apologize for your, your macro not being the best. Um, but I, I mean, I, yeah, it, it, that, that's really just the case here. They, yeah, you also say that the Zerg's ability to remix instantly is a bit too good. I mean, Zerg in the fight didn't even lose that much. And... Zerg had a lot of money, and he was just injecting. He was macroing better than you. He controlled his units better than you. He had better decision-making. My friend, Zerg YOLOing in and killing you isn't overpowered. You just suck. You really do suck. I'm sorry, buddy. All right. It's going to be it for today's episode of Is It Imba or Do I Suck? Where we delivered another big suck stamp here for Hellcat. Thanks all so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like button, subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, we'll see you all next time for a new video. Bye-bye.